Calibre is a new free-to-play team-based tactical third-person shooter which has just released on Steam after being out for I think a couple of years or so through its own website. But I'm here to tell you if it's worth playing or not. Calibre has three main sort of ways of playing. There's PvP, PvE and a PvPvE mode. But the main focus is its PvP which is 4v4 and how you play Calibre is mainly structured around its operators and there are over 60 operators currently in Calibre and they do keep adding new ones in. These operators, they have unique weapons, unique abilities, unique secondary equipment, but they're not crazy or over the top operators that just have like weird gadgets and stuff. They're all quite military themed and they all feel pretty like grounded. And there are many countries represented in the game by these operators, such as America, England, Sweden, Belarus, Russia, Israel, France, and Germany, and many more. And how you unlock these operators, you can either buy them using the premium currency or buy them with the earned in-game currency called credits, but I'll get onto microtransactions later. The operators belong to four different classes, Assault, Support, Medic, and Marksman and they all do play quite differently to each other because it's not just what weapons they have but they do have different health values armor speed stamina stamina regen and their weapons are really suited to different ranges so the assault comes with assault rifles it is the frontline class it's the fastest class and it has the most stamina so it is that class that really should try to go around the flanks and you know, be probably a little bit sneaky just to get behind or to the flanks and do the most damage while a medic uses primarily smgs and some shotguns and well it's a medic right it does healing and it can do the most revives like each class can do one revive per round but the medic can do six the marksman well yeah it's a sniper sniper rifles dmrs really suit to long range support has the most armor the most health and comes with lmgs they're the ones who can take the most damage and just generally be quite a bit of a nuisance one thing that i really really like about caliber and its operators is that when you go into them and actually look at their stats what weapons they have there's actual detailed stats of how the weapons perform pretty much every other game will give you bars to show you how they perform like a uh, weapon will do a certain amount of bars of damage or certain bars of accuracy or range and that doesn't mean anything but in caliber when you put your mouse over one of the weapons it will show you how much damage it does and with a little graph to show you the damage drop off for that weapon as well the rate of fire how long it takes to reload armor penetration it actually does exactly what it should do and what every game should do and looking at these weapons it really shows you what ranges each of the operators are like if you're playing the medic you don't want to be at long range trying to shoot someone with an smg because the smgs are really weak at range so you probably want to be a little bit sneakier until you can get someone up close there is such a big selection of these operators and they do keep adding new ones in and it's a really good part of Calibre. Now let's have a quick chat about the modes. So for PvE, we have Point Sweep, which is pretty much like playing a co-op mission. You go into the mission, there's a clear objective, you complete it, and then you go forward in the mission to the next objective, and then you need to either extract, or when you finish the last objective, it can just end. There's Special Ops, which is pretty much a harder version of Point Sweep. And it's usually like a timed availability, so it's not always available to play. And then you have Onslaught, which is an objective based but round based mode. So you have a round that's played, which will have one objective. You finish that, the next round will begin with a different objective. It's a little bit different, but it's also pretty difficult, and you can play some other more difficult challenges for that as well. The PvPVE mode called Frontline has your team and the enemy team competing to reach a certain amount of points. You get points for kills, you get points for capturing intel and bringing it back to your base, and extra points for killing certain PvE enemies. It's not the mode I usually play. I think the best mode is one of the pure PvP ones. But first, there's PvP mode called Annihilation, and that is another 
points based battle where you get points for kills points for executing your enemies you can also respawn in this mode but the first team to the points total wins and lastly the best mode is called showdown and in this mode it's the first to win three rounds you have one life per round you win that round by either eliminating the enemy team or after half the round timer is gone a neutral objective will appear randomly in the map for you to capture and if you capture that objective you win most of the time though it doesn't even get to when the neutral objective actually spawns in you usually wipe out the enemy team or get wiped out yourself first but when you get to this neutral objective situation it does feel like a mad rush for it because i have managed to win once when i've been the last guy left on my team and i managed to just quickly get to this neutral objective get into a decent position where i can defend myself and win it throughout my whole time with caliber so far the queue times have been very short and when you queue up you can actually choose to queue as certain roles or just every role also bear in mind that when i was queuing up this was before the steam version was available so when the steam version is there if you look on the steam charts for player numbers that's not going to be the true count there's going to be a lot of people playing that don't use the steam version and i reckon that the queues for the games will be even shorter when the steam version is out just because there'll be so many more people playing and we got to talk about how the game actually plays well as you can see from the gameplay i would say the movement is quite grounded you know it feels just kind of right you're not super sprinting everywhere and jumping and 360 prone in midair like some other shooters would have you doing and it just feels quite right like everything's got some weight to it there's no jumping in this game you can vault over certain objects there's no leaning and one of the main things about the movement with this is the stamina system your stamina doesn't regen between rounds especially when we're talking about showdown mode which i think is the main mode you really want to play and you use your stamina to well sprint and to use your abilities such as the medic needs to use stamina to use their healing abilities so you really need to manage your stamina in this game you can just keep rushing everywhere but you're going to be out of stamina really quickly there are some items you can use which will give you a little bit of a regen but generally you don't want to be constantly sprinting it's almost like having an eco round in something like counter-strike where you know you don't really buy anything maybe you want to hold back of sprinting everywhere and just take this round a little bit slower so your stamina will regen because it does regen slowly over time it's very slow just so you can have some extra stamina for the later rounds like the stamina your ammo is actually kept in between rounds as well while there are ammo boxes you can use throughout the level these individual ammo boxes will have a 15 minute timer on them so don't just go all out spraying everywhere and keep using these like ammo boxes if you want to just get an extra mag because you're gonna sort of screw yourself over. And the gunplay for Calibur is pretty satisfying. It doesn't use like a random bullet deviation where, where you're aiming down the sights of your weapon and you shoot, the bullet just won't go randomly off in a different direction compared to where you're actually aiming. It will go where you are aiming and that makes it feel just really, really good and really solid because when you get really good and you can control all that recoil, you will just be able to take people down a lot easier. It's a game that actually rewards good accuracy. You control that recoil, go for those headshots, and you're going to get a load of kills. And you're going to see what damage and all your kills do on the score screen. But you need to remember that each class, their weapons are suited to those different ranges. So if you are at range of the SMG, don't bother shooting because you're just going to deal chip damage wait for them to get a little bit closer it's probably better to sort of hide a little bit and let them get closer and spring a little ambush on them but what about the maps in the game well there's more than 12 i couldn't see exactly how many in game and their design is quite simple but really functional their size is kind of like a counter-strike map or day defeat map maybe slightly bigger than a counter-strike map and they're mainly symmetrical maps as well so they're really quite balanced no matter which side you start on and they do work really well there's a few flanking routes you can take so you're not all just funneling down one place there's some destructible areas in the game so you can open up some different routes 
Some maps have different levels of verticality, while some are more sort of just horizontal. They all have their own little identity, and I would say from all the ones I've played on, I haven't come across one map that I would say that it's really bad and I would actively not want to play it. Graphically, the game looks decent. It's not a bad looking game. I think it just feels a bit dated now. And really, I would say it's more functional than stylistic. It's trying to go for that, well, a realistic art style, which it does well. But yeah, the graphics, they're not going to blow you away. But thankfully, in a competitive game like this, it performs well. The sound again has more of a functional design to it. It sounds decent enough. You can hear the direction where enemies are shooting from or where they're coming from, like the footstep noise. So that's all good and that's what you really need in a competitive shooter. Again, it's just not going to blow you away at all. Now let's go through the microtransactions because they can really make or break a free to play shooter. And in Calibre, there are two types of currencies, coins, which are your premium currency and credits, which is your in-game earnable currency. And the credits are really easy to earn. You have daily tasks and weekly tasks. And I pretty much managed to complete these all the time without trying to. I just complete them as I just generally play the game, which is really good. You don't have to go out your way to finish daily or weekly tasks to get credits. And when you rank up your account, you do get extra rewards as well, like loot boxes. I haven't seen any loot boxes which are purchasable in game they're just rewards and loot boxes used in that way i think is really nice the main use for the credits and coins is to unlock new operators and all the operators that i've unlocked i've just unlocked using credits i haven't put any premium currency into the game at all so don't feel like you have to put money into the game to get the operators of course it's quicker to get them that way but you can still get these operators and the cost of these operators they generally cost in credits from 100,000 to 200,000 or 2,000 coins to 4,000 coins. And when you look at buying coins, 1,000 coins costs $4.80 and you can get a pack of 5,000 for $23.99. And there's some amounts in between those you can buy or go in even further. The cheapest operator you can get for premium currency is 2,000 coins, which really is under $10 for an operator. And... I think that's kind of decent. A lot of free to play games will have you spending $10 for a single skin, but at least with this game, you get an operator, which will have a unique weapon, possibly a unique secondary weapon, unique abilities. It's better in my opinion. So I think that's kind of all right. I wouldn't mind paying for one of these operators. Credits are mainly used for upgrading your operators when you rank them up you unlock the ability to get skills for them which are generally just like passive skills which can be like plus five health plus five percent this carry one more mag get an upgrade for your weapon which could be like a sight or a grip and none of these upgrades are over the top there's no game breaking upgrades it's just a little bit here a little bit there Yes, of course, it's an advantage, but just play your operator and you'll be able to get it yourself. And you can also purchase camo for your operator with these credits. There is a premium account you can buy, and you can buy this for a day, three days, seven days, or 30 days. And getting premium gives your account extra XP, gives you extra XP to your team, and extra XP for ranking up your operator, and gets you extra XP for the battle pass progression. And it gives you extra weekly objectives so you can earn more credits. But talking about the battle pass, I cannot find a battle pass anywhere in the game to purchase. There's some operators which are locked behind a battle pass, but I just can't find any battle pass at all. It could be that they just haven't released that battle pass at the time of making this review. So I can't really comment on the cost of the battle pass and if it's actually worth getting. The game uses the sort of typical free to play in game store where it has the revolving door of limited time sale nonsense, trying to get you on that FOMO so you don't miss out on those things that are being sold for that limited time. Just put everything up for sale, not on like a reduced amount, but let us look at everything and buy whatever we want. I just, I don't get this. This sort of FOMO revolving door nonsense just doesn't work against everyone. Just, just let us see 
the whole store. I've seen like executions that I want to get and I can't get them because they're not on sale. So I'm just, you know, I've got this sort of credits or coins or the potential for me to give them money to buy something and I'm just not doing it because they're not selling everything. So in conclusion, should you play Calibur? In my opinion, yes, this game really quite surprised me. It is a really good third person tactical shooter. It's competitive, but thankfully not toxic competitive in some other games you'll play. It's got really solid gunplay, quick matchmaking times, which is even before the Steam version come in, performs really well. And I think the microtransactions are fair for a free to play shooter. And overall, it's fun. And that's the most important thing if it's fun. And this is. If you are going to play Calibre and you want some tips to get started, then check out this video here. If you like the video, give it a like, dislike if you didn't. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I'll see you on the next one.